Hi, I'm Steve Minch. I'm here in front of this bridge, the West Seattle Bridge, because as of July 2020, right now when I'm filming this, it's closed. Why? Because the city of Seattle has noticed uh, some concerning crack and crack growth in the bridge and has closed it for safety reasons. So let's talk about the construction of this particular bridge. I'll leave the structures analysis to a structures class. So the main span, which you can see behind me, is actually a post-tensioned segmental box girder bridge. So let's break that down. First of all, it's segmental construction. So what they do is they build the bridge pier up and then they build the bridge out from the pier in alternating segments on either side. So it's called a balanced cantilever approach because the bridge actually cantilevers out from the pier and they balance the load by building one side and then the other alternately. So that's the segmental part. Now segmental, you can either do cast in place concrete as this bridge was done, where you actually have the formwork up on the bridge and you cast a section in place and then you cast a section on the other side while you move the formwork on this side, you cast this side and you go back and forth like that. Now the other option is actually a precast method where you actually cast these particular segments elsewhere, transport them to site, and then lift them up into place in a balanced alternating side manner. Here's an example of a cast in place concrete balanced cantilever bridge construction method. This comes from California. This is the Benicia Martinez Bridge. It was built in the same style as the West Seattle Bridge. You can see the segments that were cast kind of one at a time. And out on the end of either part of this bridge, you can see the formwork where they're going to cast the next sections. Here you can see up close one set of formwork all in place to cast the next section. You can also see on the top the truss work that's actually out over the edge of the existing bridge section and sort of holding this formwork in place from above. And here you can see the back side of that same truss work where it's attached to the existing bridge section both in the front and in the rear. So that was segmental. And let's talk briefly about the next part, box girder. So you can see the shape of the girder that holds the bridge deck is roughly box shaped. So this is proven structurally to be reasonably efficient shape to do that. Finally, this is actually a post-tension bridge. So post-tension means, uh, as you might know, most concrete structures that we construct these days actually have reinforcing steel in them. Now, a post-tension bridge actually goes a step beyond that. As you're constructing the bridge, you actually lay in tubes so that when the concrete is poured and hardened, you actually have these hollow tubes that go through in the right locations, of course. And then you put through steel strands in those tubes, pull them very, very tight, anchor them on both ends, and then you actually fill that tube with the strands in it with some sort of grout. That grout actually binds the strands to the bridge itself, uh, and it also prevents anything else from getting in there and corroding the steel strands. So that post-tensioning is important structurally in holding the bridge up, uh, and it's actually a fairly common technique in building bridges of this type. In this example, which is from the Hawaii Light Rail Project, you can see the white plastic post-tensioning ducts here within the reinforcing steel. You can see them closer here. Notice, of course, they're empty because obviously they're post-tensioning ducts and the concrete hasn't been poured yet. You can also see a different form of post-tensioning ducts here. This is the Hawaii Light Rail Project, but this is a precast segmental bridge. You can see the post-tensioning ducts in the back uh, that are not actually in the concrete. They're separate. They're sort of flaring off at an angle. There's three, four, five, six in the back. Uh, and you can also see in the foreground uh, some stuff that looks like pipe, which is the post-tensioning duct, and then the holes in the little pieces of concrete called blisters, which are going to hold those post-tensioning ducts. So there you have it. You've got a post-tension segmental box girder bridge. Now, the construction method for the main span, which you can see kind of up to this particular pier right here, that's what we just talked about, but the approaches are actually a bit different. They are precast, pre-stressed concrete girders. You can see 
them here behind me. And hopefully you can see them a little bit better in this picture here. So this is a different method and these use girders. And so these girders are actually precast away from the site and are transported to the site and lifted in place. And finally, the last issue with this bridge is the city says there's a locked lateral bearing on Pier 18. Pier 18 is the one you can see behind me here, the closest one to me. Uh, and a lateral bearing actually is basically a piece of somewhat compressible material that allows the bridge to move a little bit relative to itself. Um, and they say there's a bearing on that bridge, a lateral one, so one that one that uh, allows moving side to side laterally that's locked up. In other words, it doesn't allow that movement anymore. And so the concern there is that could change the stress distribution within the bridge. And so uh, that's also a concern as well as the cracks in the web and the horizontal cracks between the bridge deck and the box girder. Some trivia for the bridge or real stuff, depending upon who you are. Uh, this particular bridge used 5,000 PSI, 28 day strength, uh, compressive strength concrete. Um, also, the main span, and now this doesn't, this doesn't count the, uh, the girder bridge in back, but the main span, the box girder part, uh, that was actually put out to bid and they, contractors were allowed to bid uh, different types of construction. So this was basically precast, concrete segmental versus cast in place concrete segmental versus uh, steel bridge construction with an orthotropic deck just meaning that the deck is also uh, integral to the structure of the bridge itself and the winning bid by Kiewit Grice was actually uh, 23 million eight hundred and seventy thousand seventy one dollars uh, interestingly the low bid for the steel option was about forty million dollars so where are we today? Well, the bridge is closed as of July 2020, and the city has hired a contractor to start some emergency repairs, starting with the locked up lateral bearing on Pier 18 behind me, and also looking at some of the other uh, problems as well. Uh, from there, the city has also hired a consultant to figure out uh, what the long-term prospects for the bridge is in the condition it's in. In other words, can we repair it and live with what we have, or is it a situation where it's probably more cost effective to tear it down and build a new one? We'll see.